Good morning. It's really nice to be here with you all today. Uh, I'm just going to take you all in for a moment. Okay. Ner- this is a nervous system thing. <laughs> if I can get a little bit more connected, I might come down in my nervous system and have some words and be a little bit more interesting. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren, David, for the platform. Lauren, for the invitation. Where did she go? They're here. Um, this is an amazing opportunity and a huge honor. I get to come here and talk with you about something that I'm so passionate about and want more people to know about. And the program that Lauren was describing makes it so evident. And I was like, oh, yes, I should be here. Um, Because these medical students, they're not the only students. They're not the only people that are experiencing these issues of high stress and the challenge of living in our modern world. So I'm going to be talking with you today about something that I wish we would learn in school. I wish I had learned in school and known about. I think it would have helped me an awful lot. Um, I might not have had so much difficulty with the classes where I had to do public speaking. Um, And I think it would make school life a lot easier for pretty much all of us. And life in general. I'm hoping, oh, what it's about. So there are these words that might not mean very much to you, but basically I'm going to talk to you about why safety matters and why feeling it in your body matters, because that's the way that you connect with safety, by feeling it in your body. It's a nervous system thing. It isn't a thought. I'm going to tell you how that's tied to your nervous system design, which is polyvagal theory. That's the most recent understanding of how our nervous system works. So you'll have a little bit better idea about what's happening inside of you and what's happening inside of other people when things seem kind of strange. And um, after this morning, I'm hoping you'll be interested in investing some time, energy, attention in cultivating greater safety for yourself and for others, those you work with, your family, and everywhere you go. Just want just a little tidbit. Um, I was advised to say um, there's science behind this. Um, the polyvagal theory has been around for, I think, well over 25 or 30 years now. And so we've got lots of neuroscience data to back up that this is helpful, what I'm suggesting today. I'm going to try to point out nervous system things as we go along so you can start to get an idea, an experiential idea of what I'm talking about instead of just trying to take in a bunch of words. So we're going to do one right now. It's called orienting. Could you, just for a moment, look around the room, looking at this beautiful space, floor to ceiling. Ooh, that's bright light. Thanks, CMA, for this beautiful space. Windows. And then just for a moment, you don't have to look right at them, but notice there's people around you. Right? There's a lot of people in the room. And see if you could just get a sense of the room, a sense of the group, what it's like to be here in the group. Feel inside of yourself what it's like to be here in this group of like-minded folks. And don't worry if you can't feel it or you don't know what you're looking for. Your only job, like I tell folks in my meditation classes, is to notice. Even when you don't like what you feel or you can't feel anything, your experience is still important. Okay? So, public speaking for me is kind of like skiing. I need to warm up. So I've been doing a little bit of that, and the orienting is also a way to warm up, especially if our neck is turning a little bit while we're doing it. Usually we go to snow trails, and I have to go down the bunny hill five or six times before I get my legs, and I'm ready to go. And in this picture, 
Um, I'm at, this is Mary Jane Hill in Winter Park, and you can't even tell that I'm terrified, right? Just like right now, you might not be able to tell. <laughs> um, and I work at it. So public speaking, there's this thing, we get scared, and then suddenly we start to shut down or disconnect, and our affect, our face might get a little flatter, our voice might get a little bit flatter, and then we watch right, the other people start to shut down or get sleepy, and it's like, whoa, what is happening here? <laughs> so sharing this with you is this little warm-up device for my nervous system so I can stay connected to you and to myself right now. Um, yeah, you can't tell I mostly fell down that hill. <laughs> All right, so here's our little road map. Um, our nervous system likes to know what's coming. So here's our very short little uh, framework for what's gonna happen today. We're gonna do a little arriving exercise, and then we're gonna have a Thanksgiving, and then um, I'm gonna tell you about the why. I think that's the most important part today, because all the other stuff there's people out there, there's people all over town you can find out more information about how the nervous system works and what you can do to get lower in your nervous system so that you can feel more connected and more authentic. Um, but the why. And then we'll have a tiny bit of, of some what to do, some things you can start to do, but because we're going to do experiential stuff today, you'll already have it in your back pocket to take with you. Okay. So I'm going to make a request today. I'm investing the time to be here and investing time of this, uh, this presentation for us to be experiential instead of just giving you words. So I'm going to ask you to invest also today, right now, in creating a safer group experience. So would you be willing to put away your devices Right? Like, really put them away. You can get any of this information you want. I'll give you the PowerPoint. <laughs> Call me for the research. Any, any of it. You can just be. You can just be here. And now, let's all together, let's intend to, create, to protect the space together. So what that does is it makes it safer. If we're all paying attention and we feel each other doing that, we create this really strong container that is easy to learn in and easy to try out new things like feeling ourselves in. We create that container with intention, attention, and openness. Like, hey, what might I get from this today? What might I discover? Okay, so let's see where this adventure takes us. So we're going to arrive just a little bit more fully, and that means becoming more present to where we are and to ourselves in our bodies. So just for a moment, could you feel yourself in the chair? And notice the places where your body makes contact with the chair. Your feet upon the floor. And then just doing this little basic check-in. The state of your body, right? whatever that means to you, whatever you notice inside or any part of your body. <clears throat> and then do a temperature check of your emotions. What's the flavor? What's the general tone? And then check the quality of your mind. Like, what's your mind state? Fast or slow? Soft or sharp? Busy or spacious? And then just release your attention. Okay, so I put this intentionally on the. Um, the roadmap because I wanted to model this idea of collectively connecting to 
our intentions and our resources, our supports. So I, I did a little look up because I had a much longer plan here, but it didn't fit in the format. So I picked the most important part. Did you know, I wanted to know, who was on this land before us? Central Ohio, like, I don't know who was here in the museum space on this ground, but the Iroquois, did anybody know that? And then more people going back almost 13,000 years. Oh my gosh. And they have these wonderful traditions, the Iroquois Nation. Um, there's this Thanksgiving prayer of the Haudenosaunee Native Americans. And they see humans as interconnected parts of a larger web of life where each being is equally valuable. These expressions of Thanksgiving are, quote, the words that come before all else and precede every council meeting. And I'm just going to read you two verses, and I'm wondering, can you feel along as I read and just see what it's like for you? The people. Today we have gathered and we see that the cycles of life continue. We've been given the duty to live in balance and harmony with each other and all living things. So now we bring our minds together as one, as we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. Now our minds are one. The earth. We are all thankful to our mother, the earth, for she gives us all that we need for life. She supports our feet as we walk about upon her. It gives us joy that she continues to care for us as she has from the beginning of time. To our mother, we sing greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. I'm so struck by the intentionality of this, like they do it together as a group, right? And there are no material possessions or goals or achievements named in the additional 13 verses. They would go on and thank every aspect of being, teachers and earth, sun, moon, and stars, and corn, and medicine herbs, right? What if we made this a part of the intention in our collective spaces, like an on-purpose thing we do together? Not hidden and relegated to private meditation spaces. Just thinking about that. Okay, so here's, here's the big slide, the why. So this is a complex topic, and I tried to reduce it down to the bits that I think you might be able to digest first and are most important for you to go away with. There's four parts to this safety thing. And the first part is authenticity. So this is the real goal. Mine talks about safety and the nervous system, but not safety for safety's sake. Authenticity is the thing that we're hungry for. We're starving for it. We want it in other people. We want it in ourselves. And like the cookie monster wants cookies, we're attracted to what's real. A lot of people know that they want to be more real and they want to be living more authentically, but they don't know how to get there. And some people are disconnected. They can't feel it, but they've got this vague sense of like, Dissatisfaction, right? Thing two, safety. So as it turns out, authenticity is a byproduct of safety. We can't jump over it. We can't get to authentic expression really directly. There's lots of books and coaches and teachers and people out there who will try to teach you how to just do it, just push through, just right. do the thing that terrifies you. We, can't, we can do a little bit of that, but we can't quite jump over ourselves to get to authenticity. It's not a mind over matter thing. We're socialized to do instead of be, so we're kind of attached to the just do it idea. <coughs> thing three, safety is not an idea. It's a thing that we feel in our bodies. And here's our nervous system connection, because that's synonymous with, with feeling it in our bodies. 
So what our nervous system is doing is um, sending us cues in our body that want us to do things that, so we can take some action to try to get safer, to try to be safer. If we can't feel or let ourselves feel, then that ident undigested experience, feeling is how we digest our experience, it just sits there in our nervous system. And it creates a, a sort of bog down. It takes some of our life energy away from just regular living. It's almost like our nervous system gets constipated. You know how, like, if that's happening, part of your attention is always diverted to that until it gets resolved. Lastly, connection. So connection plays a big role in safety in that we've got this sort of reciprocal relationship between safety and connection. If we can connect, we might be able to get to more safety. And sometimes we, um, if we feel safe enough, we can connect. So it's, it's if, if unsafety gets intense enough or high enough, we can't connect anymore. That means we can't use connection to feel safer anymore. So there's a bit of a paradox, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about the nervous system piece there. I think it'll be clearer. So this byproduct of enough safety, this authenticity thing, it's the creative force in all of us. It's the thing just waiting to be unleashed, unfrozen, fully welcomed. It's at work in us, all of us, already. It's trying to be unleashed. And this drive toward our realist self, it's already, it already knows what to do. If we give it enough support, it takes care of things for us. And that's why it's so important to know the things I'm going to tell you about next, about how your nervous system works. Okay, so that was a lot of information, so we're just going to pause again, take a breath, come back to yourself. Feel the ground for a second. Okay. So here's this tricky bit about connection and safety. So we know connection matters, right? There's a ton of research that says social support is super important. It is connected to all kinds of positive outcomes, you know, health outcomes, mental health outcomes, um, increased healing time and greater compassion and self-compassion and, and all these things that we want, all the best, best, thing, best things about life. But the research also says that it's perceived connection. It's perceived support. And so perceived means we have to feel it. We can have all the support in the world, and if we can't feel it, it's not going to matter, right? We can't jump over safety to get to connection. That's the main thing you need to know. What can happen when we feel connected? Right? Amazing things. We know this, right? Watching people come together after uh, disasters or come together for big creative projects and producing amazing things. We know what happens when we discover some amazing thing that right? we just want to share with everybody, or we have some windfall or good luck, and then we're suddenly spontaneously more generous and tip a little bit more, <laughs> smile at people. <laughs> and conversely, right? some pretty awful things when we don't feel connected. Road rage, voter apathy, overwhelmed, checked out, binging Netflix. Right? All the numbing things right? that we do, right? There's a way longer list than that for attempts to escape, escape the feeling. We're disconnected from the cycles of light and the magnetism of the earth because we're inside, staring at screens all day. And the problem with this is that the more 
disconnected we are, and the longer we're disconnected, the longer it takes to get back to ourselves, to safety, and the more supports we need to get back to, some people call it self-regulation. I don't like that word. It's like, why don't you regulate yourself? <laughs> right? It doesn't work that way. Our nervous system auto-regulates. It knows how. With the right conditions, it just comes right back into safety, right back into coherence. But to feel connected, okay, so there's this feeling thing again. We have to be able to feel. We have to be able to feel to digest our experience. And if we can't feel, we can't really care. Right? You know how like when you're upset or stressed out and somebody tries to help you feel better and you can't take it in? Right? That means your nervous system level of threat is high enough that no connection, no. Right? That is not what your body wants to do in that moment. It wants to protect itself. So it's detrimental to relationships when we can't feel. It's detrimental to the earth. Right? We have a lot of big things out there that need our attention, but if we can't feel, right, or if we can't let ourselves feel, because if we feel it, it's too much, right? we're overwhelmed. And so we need people who either uh, are not either numbed out, shut down, or over-responding. Their nervous system is over-responding when we come together and try to work on big things. So there's that, the longer list of that shorter one. The thing you need to know about these things is that they don't actually create safety. These aren't actually the things that your nervous system wants. Beyond basic material needs, our nervous system wants connection. That's the only thing that makes us more happy. That's our biology. We aren't wired. Our, our biology, our bodies are not wired to get happier from more stuff. And I think everybody suspects that deep down. You know, we pay lip service to it. We say stuff doesn't make you happy. But we kind of do something different than we're saying, right? We're still all in a lot of ways, trying to get more. It's a natural impulse. I think we want to be kind to ourselves and noticing that that impulse to look outside of ourselves to feel better, right? It's natural, right? What we want to do is connect. But instead, we're, we're trying to stuff that in the place where our nervous system thinks connection needs to go, right? So it doesn't work. And then we have to do this over and over and over and over. We have a word for that, right? Addiction, I think? <laughs> okay. All right. So let's notice together for a second. I want to be really responsible and say I skipped right over this thing about material um, needs being met. And that there are a lot of folks in the world who don't have basic needs met. And that means they can't get to safety, right? The ongoing unsafety of things like racism or poverty, the ways that our institutions, medical, educational, government, create unsafety through disconnection, right? That, that traumatize us, traumatize a lot of our citizens, traumatize people all over the world. I just want to make sure that we hold this and sense it for a moment and, and not just talk about the happy stuff. Okay. Things, the things that we could be working on together. Okay, so that was a big thing to feel into and contemplate, so let's do a little supports exercise. Could you just for a moment start to feel the chair and let yourself, let the chair support you just a little bit more. 
Could you let the ground hold up your legs just a little bit more? And just notice what that feels like. So we're going into the part about your nervous system. I'd like you to know that we all have one. It's on all the time. It's always scanning for safety. That's its job. And then it does all the other functions, maintenance and repair and health and connection and all the other stuff when it doesn't have to deal with safety. It's not a thought. You don't have to do anything. It's doing this behind the scenes all the time. It's, you know, we talk about mind-body connection. It's more accurate to think about having a body-mind. Right? If you have a body that houses a computer with three minds in it, right? It's a, a big mind with a brain and a heart mind and a gut mind, and they all work together in a seamless coordination. There's an order of operations. <clears throat> There's this hierarchy. That's what polyvagal theory contributes to this understanding of our nervous system. That there's a tiered response system. First, we want to go to the least energy, lowest threat strategy. Engage. If I can get a little connection, maybe I can feel better. If I can't satisfy the feel better with connection, then I'm going to go to the next strategy. It requires a little more energy. Right? If I can't get away or hide, then I'm going to mobilize a little bit more energy. And then if that can't be satisfied, like we're in a meeting, right? can't flee, can't fight, my nervous system's going to help me get out and shut me down a little bit, called the freeze. Okay? It's helping us. So that middle zone, that's like where our nervous system wants to keep us all the time. Right? Happy. It, Mobilizes a little more energy when we need it to exercise and engage, a little lower when we're just going to um, rest or digest. We can have shocks to our system, right? Those can be long-term, little stressors like work stress, or they can be great big ones, car accidents, or overwhelming psychological events, losses, death. And then that nice rhythm becomes not so nice. And the main thing to know about that is that outside of your resilient zone, sometimes we call it the window of tolerance, the okay zone, that you can't really access your social engagement system. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what that is in a second. Pause again, that was a lot of information. Fill your body for a second. Fill the chair. <coughs> okay. That's your social engagement system. Your face, especially from here to here. Top of your lip to your eyebrows. Your middle ear muscles, kind of like you have ear lids that can focus in on human voice, tune out the background. Your voice, we know what our, happens to our voice in different states of activation, different states of stress. And then our gestures, we can get frozen, I'm fine. <laughs> or kind of like closed off, right? Or we can feel free and expressive. But we're gonna have li limited access to those functions. They get kind of stiff and, and frozen, muted, when we're outside of our zone. And you wanna be careful about calling that dysfunction in yourself or others because that is very functional. This nervous system has helped us. We're the beneficiaries of 10,000 plus years of experiments, right? Our nervous system knows how to help us out. So we want to be kind to it. These are all the functions that are lost when you're outside of your zone. Maybe not totally, but it'd be like trying to suck it through a little straw, what's left over when your energy is diverted to safety. So how to invest? We've done a lot of that today. Taking breaks, feeling your body, 
slowing down. Practice feeling your insula, the part that's of your brain that senses you, is like a muscle. So every time you practice feeling yourself, it's like going to the gym. You're building the ability to do that. Accessing the present brings you out of, often out of, those uncomfortable zones. Because in, in the present, there's no tiger, and your nervous system says, oh, it's OK. Mm -hmm. And reduce inputs. When you're overwhelmed, if you try to force it and force yourself, like we do that, it's called overriding. Make ourselves do it anyway. It forces our system to be more shut down. And we talked about before what happens when we're more shut down, how hard it is to come out. And get skilled support if you find what you're feeling is too big. We're not designed to do it alone. OK? Right. So I think this guy has some stuff to teach us. They live a really long time, right? Okay. And, um, you know, Thomas Hubel says, we've got this um, collective pathology, which is we don't have enough time to digest. So I want to encourage you all to invest in taking more time to digest your food as well as your experiences. You can't do it when you're in a hurry. You know what happens when you're in a hurry? People become objects, obstacles, right? They're not really humans anymore. Your gut will work better. Your brain will work better. You'll feel better and become more and more authentically you. I trust that version of you and me to solve the big problems in the world. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Today. Thank you. So you must have questions.